have a favorite weed? And if you do, do you feel bad about having a favorite weed? I just recently read that a weed is an opinion. It's a plant that grows someplace where you don't want it to grow. One of my favorite plants, or one of my favorite weeds, is the buttonweed. Now why is it one of my favorites? Uh, I think I, I just like the, the large leaves, the soft leaves. You can use it for an emergency. Well, we'll come to that, get to that. Um, and I also really like the seed capsule, which uh, looks terrific in a dried flower arrangement. However, in recently uh, doing research for this video, I found out that perhaps I shouldn't like velvet weed or buttonweed. It's pretty noxious, um, pretty um, invasive. So hey, I'm the Iowa Prairie Girl. I'm coming to you from my front yard in Saragota County from my flower garden. And I have decided to let buttonweed or velvet leaf grow here in my flower garden. But now that I've done research, I'm contemplating whether or not I should pull it. So hey, stick around. We're going to take a look at buttonweed or velvet leaf, whichever one you want to call it. And we're going to look at how to identify it, which is very, very easy. It's one of the easiest plants to identify. We'll take a look at where it came from, what are some of its good qualities, and what are some of its bad qualities. And it's got a lot, a lot of names that we're going to take a look at. So please stick around. This is the Iowa Prairie Girl, and we're going to talk about velvet leaf. is an annual. Uh, it grows, like I said, I'm in North Iowa in Saragota County. This is my front yard and my flower garden, and it grows pretty much all over North America. Now velvet leaf is very easy to identify because you just look for the leaf. These leaves are a chordate uh, shape, or easier to remember, a heart shape. Um, they have a tip on them right here. They come to a point to a tip. They get to be about eight inches um, wide. And they also are very veined, and they have a palmate vein. And palmate is easy to remember by palmate in your palm, and it, they look like fingers. So it's a palmate, so they have a, a very definite vein to them. They are very, very soft. The whole plant is covered with very fine um, hairs, and so this is a very soft um, plant, very soft leaf. And as you can see, I, I'm touching it. There's no really allergies to it. And um, as I mentioned, if you're in an emergency, if you're out on a picnic, on a hike, um, wherever, uh, driving in the country, and you have a um, bathroom emergency, this is the leaf you want to go for. I would say this is the number one leaf. Second would be uh, woolly mullen. But this would be your first leaf that you'd want to go for. So it does have some, uh, we're going to go through why it's an invasive and undesirable plant, but there's one reason why it's desirable. So we have the leaf. As I said, it's very large, um, uh, very soft. As you can see, it's a light green. And it also has a very long, each leaf has a very long um, stem or petiole, um, several inches long. Uh, the stem is also a light green, and it is too also very hairy. And as you can see, it can get to be, um, this plant here, what is about four, four feet tall. Uh, Velvet leaf can get to be about eight feet tall. So anywhere between about two to eight feet tall, you'll find these plants. Um, they branch out, so you'll have the, the main stem, but then it's very, has a lot of different branches on it. Leaf, when you crush it up uh, in your hands, um, it has a, an odor to it. It's real, I, they say an odor, but I'd say it's just a, a smell to it. I don't find it unpleasant. Uh, this leaf is used to, um, can, it has an antibiotic almost purpose to it. It can sanitize. It is also used to soften skin um, and it heals. It's also been used to heal uh, cuts or bruises on the skin. I want to focus on the flower now. The flower is very short-lived. So I didn't mention this is the first week in August. The, the, the plant uh, usually blooms late summer into fall. And the flower is just this very small, um, about an inch wide uh, 
flower with five yellow petals, and the petals are kind of indented and shallow. Um, they also have five uh, sepals on the back. That's that the 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 part of the flower that kind of makes the bud. And you know, I could not find or read where it talks about the flower closing. The flower is very short lived, but it's my belief now that this flower closes in the evening. Last evening I was trying to take videos or pictures for this video and I couldn't find an open flower. This morning I um, found the flowers open and I took a picture and now it is 4.30 in the afternoon and this is the only flower left on this plant that is still has an open flower. All the rest of them have closed up. It too, the sepal, um, is very hairy. Pretty much everything except for the flower on this plant is covered in, in fine soft hairs that make it very um, soft and, and kind of hairy. Um, the plant then also has the stamen in the middle which is very, multiple stamens in the middle um, that are also yellow. The neat thing about this plant and the reason why a lot of people like this plant is after the flower um, blooms and very shortly after, well let's go back to the flowers come from the axle of the leaves. So you could have one flower coming from the axle of the leaf or you could have four or five or six or seven flowers coming off from the axle of the leaf. They also have a, a petiole that's uh, about an inch long and of course that too is, is soft and hairy. But once the flower is done blooming, it develops this seed capsule. And this is where a lot of the, the fun names for this plant come from. And I'm just going to pick this here because I'm not quite sure if I'm going to keep this plant or not. Um, so you have this seed capsule, and I have lots of pictures that I'll show you. Um, but it develops rather quickly after the blossom. And the seed capsule um, has these... Uh, I'm just going to call them pokey things at the end. And then it also has this fibrous kind of uh, crimped, a crimped edge. So a couple of the names for this plant are um, uh, uh, pie maker because of the crimped edges. It reminds you of, of an edge of a pie or the fluted edge of a pie. Um, butter print or butter press um, because apparently years ago, uh, when you had made butter, you could take the dried capsule, fruit capsule of this, and you would um, basically uh, make um, patterns on your butter um, using the seed pod of the buttonweed or the velvet leaf, is that what you want to call it? So again, I did, didn't mention velvet leaf because it's so velvety to the touch. Button, I believe, um, is referring to the seed pod, buttonweed. Develops, develops this cute little button. So very quickly, these little buttons dry up and they, oh my goodness, and they dry up and become brown. Now, one of the reasons why this plant is so invasive is that one plant here could produce up to 17,000 seeds. So in here, this little capsule here is full of seeds, and then as it dries out, the, there's vents that open up and the seeds fall out of the side vents. But as I mentioned, they're also pretty cute, um, and they're really neat for dried flower arrangements. So as I've mentioned, this plant does have some useful properties. Um, I mentioned its healing uses for wounds. It's very soft, um, it can soften your skin, and of course it's very soft and can be used for emergency purposes um, in, the in the bathroom area when you're out, um, out for a hike or out um, in the country. Um, this plant has been grown for centuries in Asia. Uh, the Chinese grew it for its fibrous uh, qualities. Um, it's got a very um, great fiber to it. It's called jute. Uh, Chinese jute is another name for this plant. And um, it's been used, it's used to make rope, twine, uh, a, a, a cloth, um, netting. So it, it's been grown for those purposes. Now, how did it make it to North America? It's believed that in the 1700s it came over as a uh, cultural um, a plant to grow. Um, and it was grown here for at least 100 years for, again, for the use of making cloth or for making rope. So that's how this plant from Asia made it over to the United States. However, it spreads crazy. So I mentioned how many seeds grow in a seed pod. The next thing that's interesting about those seeds is that they can lay dormant in the ground for up to 50 years. Um, 
So where would you find this plant other than um, I accidentally let it grow in my flower garden and why was it in my flower garden? You usually find this plant in disturbed areas like construction areas, um, plowed fields, a lot of it is in corn fields or soybean fields, um, construction areas as I mentioned, along um, roadsides. So what happens is that that, le that seed might lay dormant there for a while and then once that area is disturbed, like maybe someone's going to build a house or something like that, the seeds get stirred up, they come to the top, and then the plant comes. So that's why you might have an area where you've never seen a buttonweed before, and now you see buttonweed um, because someone's done some digging around in that dirt. If I didn't mention, this whole plant is edible. The leaves are used in stir fries. The seeds can be eaten kind of like sunflower seeds um, by humans or um, also by um, animals in the wild, a mouse or um, other kind of rodents will eat up those, those seeds. Um, the Chinese also use this for treatment of fever, uh, diarrhea, and stomach ulcers. So a lot of good uses for this plant. So what are the bad properties of this plant? As I mentioned, it grows in disturbed areas. You're going to find it in crop fields. Um, it is not good in a soybean field or in a um, corn field. It does like to grow in full sun, but it will grow in partial shade, and it will grow um, in a corn field underneath the corn and spread all over um, under the corn. Even You won't be able to see it when you drive by, but it might be there under the corn. So what this plant does is that it sucks up a lot of water and nutrients from the soil, um, and so that's why it's not good uh, to have it um, in, in any place where you're trying to grow something good, um, especially like a, a, a crop field. It also apparently can send off some chemicals that are detrimental to the plants around it. And so you can see where my dilemma lies. Do I leave this beautiful buttonweed? Because I like buttonweed, I like the leaf, I like the seed pod. Do I leave it here in my flower garden? Do I worry about the plants around it? Um, or do I pull it? Now, a buttonweed has a very short uh, root tap or tap root. Um, and so it's very easy to pull. Maybe not so much uh, a five foot buttonweed, but smaller buttonweeds are very easy to pull. And so that's one way to get rid of it. You can mow it, you can pull it, and of course um, you could probably spray it as well. All right, so we've got velvet leaf, velvet plant, velvet weed, buttonweed, Chinese jate, butter print, pie maker, elephant ears, crown weed, which I'm sure comes from the, again, from the seed pod. Um, <laughs> those are a lot of names for one plant. I guess it's up to you now. I've given you what I know about button weed. It's up to you now to decide whether or not you like it or not. I'm sure it depends on whether or not you're a farmer um, or whether or not you're just uh, going to grow this plant for your own pleasure or whether you just need it for an emergency. So hey, I'm the Iowa Prairie Girl. Again, coming to you from Saragota County in North Iowa. It is the first week in August. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, as I always say, I hope that you get a chance to get out um, and, and enjoy nature. I don't know, again, whether I would describe seeing buttonweed as something wonderful or not. It does bring a smile to my face when I see it. So I hope that you get to get out and you decide whether or not you think it's a wonderful plant or not. Thanks for watching.